Poppy was nervous. She didn't know where she was going. It's okay. It's okay, babies. But the car belonged to this guy, Lee, an expert dog rescuer. Someone had told him that Poppy didn't have a home, and he rushed right over to rescue her. Poppy had no idea who Lee was, but he knew just the right way to hold her to make her feel safe. So she decided to go with him. So once they were on the road, Poppy started having second thoughts. Where exactly was Lee taking her? Had she made the right decision to go with him? And do you smell that? But Lee knew what to do. He let Poppy sit in his lap, which made her feel a lot better. But that's when Lee noticed something strange. Are you dirty or are you getting markered up? I am in shock right now. Someone had drawn on Poppy's fur with markers. Poor Poppy. This will wash this stuff off of you. But Poppy was worried. What if the marker wouldn't wash off? What if it was permanent? All right. Welcome home, baby. Did he say home? As in her new home? Here. Bathtub? Poppy wanted to get rid of the marker spots, but couldn't they try some baby wipes first? Maybe a little spit on the corner of a napkin? Maybe she could just stay in this crate while Lee could come up with some other ideas. Come on. Let's get it cleaned up. Ah, <sighs> she did really want that marker gone. Okay, let's do it. But check that temperature, Lee. Not too hot, okay? The warm water did feel soothing. She was even starting to relax. This was the best bath she'd ever had. Maybe the only bath. Soap. Whoa, 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 soap? Don't get it in my eyes. But Lee wasn't just an expert dog rescuer. He was an expert dog bather, making the marker spots disappear. You're looking much better now. Poppy couldn't have asked for anything more, but she started to feel nervous again. It's okay, it's okay. Would these nervous feelings ever stop? But just like before, Lee was there to give her lots of love. See, that's not so bad. And just like the marker, her nervous feelings disappeared, this time for good. But Lee didn't just give Poppy love, he also gave her a job. Because you see, the house was full of other dogs that Lee had rescued. And her new job was to make friends with all of them. Because being part of a big, loving dog family would help everyone get ready to be adopted into their forever homes, including Poppy. Come on, Poppy. Finding everyone forever homes could take a while, but Poppy didn't mind. Because now she had an important job helping Lee and finding sticks. This one was perfect. A perfect gift for a hero. Which lovable's friend are you about to meet? Let's spin the wheel to find out. Tuff was so worried when his shell got cracked. He couldn't fix it by himself. What was he going to do? But thank goodness a rescuer found him and patched him right up, good as new. Now Tuff has a home with his rescuer where he spends all day collecting everything he can see. What a happy little turtle. Hello there, all you big curious. <gasps> Wait, we can't start yet. Ah, better. Now we can start. Hello there, all you big curious creatures. I'm Fig, and I'm about to embark on an unbelievable super duper journey. Wanna come? I'm calling it Fig's Turtly Awesome Backyard Adventure. Whoa, 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 what am I saying? I'm a tortoise, not a turtle. Uh, forget the title. What I'm trying to tell you is that today, I'm going outside. But heading into the wild is a big deal, even when you've done it a million times, like me. There's a ton of stuff you gotta do, which means getting up early. Ugh. 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 
Oh, sorry, still a little sleepy. A nice cold shower always wakes me up and gets my skin feeling nice. The last thing I need when I'm outside is a dry shell situation, but I need to stay moist on the inside too, which is why mom gives me a fresh bowl of water every day. She's even got this fancy water making machine. She said the water has minerals in it, but I haven't been able to find any. And of course, I can't go adventuring on an empty stomach. So mom made me a gourmet breakfast of green stuff, grassy stuff, and fruity stuff with just a sprinkle of calcium powder, <laughs> whatever that is. You know, if I lived in the wild, I'd have to find all this stuff myself. What does a calcium powder tree even look like? I was almost ready, but I couldn't skip my daily spa session. <laughs> this shell doesn't keep itself shiny, you know. Psst, just between us, did you know I'm a leopard tortoise? I have spots, just like a leopard. <laughs> One last nibble of the fruity stuff. <sighs> and it was time to leave my enclosure. You know what they say, life moves pretty fast. But there's always time for hugs. And this is not a leopard, by the way. No spots, see? All right, at last, I'm finally ready to leave the house and go on my adventure outside. Oh, wait, I'm not sure this hat matches my vibe. Mom! Ooh, I love it, but a bit too fancy. Purple, mm, not my shade. I like this, but I was picturing something a little more rugged. Yeehaw! Giddy up! But, hmm, doesn't really work without tiny boots. Want to know a secret about my hats? They look really good and taste even better. In fact, I've never met a hat I couldn't snack on. Except for this one, because it tastes like a hat. Oh, this one's perfect. Okay, I'm finally ready for the moment we've all been waiting for. To the backyard! Whoa, check out nature's carpet. <laughs> Kinda tickles my belly. One step, two steps, three steps, and done. Phew, I almost made it halfway across the yard. Impressive, right? This was the best five minutes ever. Mom, I'm ready to go inside now. Let's check out my clubhouse. Did you know my mom built this thing out of a TV stand? That's why there's a TV on top of it. But who has time to watch TV when you're having this much fun? Gouda and Kusa are so jealous. I bet they wish they could squeeze in here with me. Sorry, guys. This clubhouse is for tortoises only. Of course, I can't go to bed without some dinner and a little num-num to end the day on a sweet note. Which reminds me, what should we call this unforgettable day? Figs Tortoise Chronicles? Uh, nah, too official. Fig Walks on Grass. No, that's boring. <laughs> no worries. I'm sure I'll dream up something perfect. Good night. Emily's new house came with an unexpected surprise. Not one, not two, but 16 cats. Them all. The cats were feral, meaning they lived outside. And they didn't really like having people around. Emily was a little worried. Feral cats could sometimes be protective of where they lived. What if they decided they didn't want Emily moving in? If she and the cats were going to be neighbors, she would need to make 16 new friends. At first, the cats weren't too sure. They had their own way of doing things and didn't like humans getting too close. But Emily came out to her driveway again and again. She tried everything to get them to like her. Until... They started to trust her. Hi, Bestie. Emily was finally friends with the cats. 
But there was another problem. They weren't really safe living outside. The house's previous owner had let them eat in this shed, but it wasn't the best place for them. It got cold in the winter, and it didn't have any doors. But they couldn't live in the house with Emily either. They were feral cats who wanted to be free to roam. Plus, did I mention there were 16 of them? So Emily came up with a pretty amazing idea. What if she made the shed into a cat dream house? She started making plans. The cats could just imagine the kinds of surprises in their new house. Maybe it would have a fuzzy blanket to curl up on, or two fuzzy blankets, and bins and bins of catnip. Maybe there'd be a couch to scratch. No, a whole scratching wall and a whole row of warm laptops to lay on, and birds to stare at, or maybe a fish tank. Soon, it was shopping time. The cats wanted to come too, but they'd just have to wait and see what Emily and her family came up with. Oh, that's better than a blanket. <gasps> we all get our own bowl. Some food bins. That looks soft. Are those treats? Those are treats! The cat dream house was starting to take shape. But cats aren't known for their patience. Why is she perfect? I love her. After a ton of work and time, the cat house was complete. And it was better than the cats had imagined. They were still free to roam outside, but anytime they wanted to come in, they had a bed and a bowl just for them. It's hard to believe these 16 cats were once afraid of people. Now, Emily loves that they come running up to greet her when she goes outside. And they love when she comes to visit them in their cat dream house. When Emily bought her home, she had no idea what she was getting into. But she's now the proud mom of not one, not two, but 16 lovable cats and their one awesome dream home. When Amber found this baby deer crying for help, she couldn't believe her eyes. She knew right away something was wrong. Where's your mom? Sometimes mama deer will leave their babies for a little while. But this baby deer seemed lost and hungry. I don't have anything. Amber didn't know what to do. Should she take him with her? What if the mama deer was looking for him? Suddenly, the baby deer ran off. Amber thought maybe he'd found his mom. I go back home and I go to bed and I can't stop thinking about him. That night, she went back to check on the baby and saw he still needed help. We couldn't handle it. We came back and found him. Amber knew she had to be this baby deer's rescuer. Okay, now I need some help on what to do. She knew the deer had to eat, but she didn't have any bottles. So she filled a glove with milk hoping he would like it. And he did! <laughs> Amber decided to name him Scout. It was a good sign that Scout wanted to eat. He was such a brave little deer and wasn't going to give up. Scout couldn't wait to start the day. Amber had watched him all night, and by morning, she already loved him. But she knew she couldn't take care of Scout forever. Wild baby deer need professional help. Luckily, there was an animal shelter nearby. When they got to the shelter, the rescuers couldn't believe how little Scout was. It turns out 
he was only two days old. If he hadn't asked Amber for help, he'd have been in serious trouble. But now, Scout was trouble-free. With lots of care and love from his rescuers, he grew up and made friends. And one day, when he's old enough, he'll go back to the forest again as a strong, brave, and happy deer. All it took was a little help. Where's your mom? A butterfly doctor. Butterfly surgery is actually a thing, I guess. This butterfly's wing is hurt. And it's trying to fly away, but it can't because its wing is broken. Will a hero come to his rescue? <coughs> I walked through this one field and I looked down and I noticed that there was a butterfly there just kind of flopping around. Annika saw that the butterfly had hurt his wing and she knew she had to help. That's when she became an animal rescuer, or should I say, a butterfly rescuer. I thought, well, it's cold, it's October, so I put my finger out and it hopped right on. Annika took the butterfly home to give him all the help and love she could. My first thought was, I have to figure out how to feed this thing. <laughs> what do butterflies like to eat? She had no idea. I found a video of someone feeding a butterfly an orange. I laid it all out, kind of saw what he crawled to. I found out that it was sugar water that they loved. He drinks a lot. Monica helped the butterfly so much. He's learning how to glide. And we did a flight practice where I would hold him on my finger and then kind of nudge him forward and flutter down. After a while, the butterfly started trusting Annika and basically became her new best friend. I would take him to the beach. She took him for car rides and on the train. We would ride the train together for 10 hours. People on there freak out. They're like, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's just a butterfly. <laughs> That butterfly and his friend are looking like they're enjoying their life together. He would crawl off my face every once in a while. And he'd crawl on her, even when she was eating. But one day, something bad happened. The butterfly hurt his wing worse than before. When he flapped his wing a little too hard, it broke even more. Annika knew her friend needed her. She was determined to help. She found out how to fix a butterfly wing that had been really badly broken. You have to flip the butterfly upside down and you have to hold it down with something so the body's not squished but the wings are flat. She had to be so careful. Butterfly is really happy. The wings fit a lot better. Anka saved him twice. And I just kind of thanked him for being my friend, letting me help him. And she knew he would be her friend forever. It's a cute little butterfly. Which lovable's friend are you about to meet? Let's spin the wheel to find out. Hank used to be afraid of everything, even his rescuer. The world seemed so big and scary to such a tiny hedgehog. It took a long time for him to start feeling braver. Even food made him nervous. Now, Hank loves going everywhere with his family. He can't wait to see what each day brings. Good morning, little hedgehog. Time to relax. Let's make sure your spines are smooth and shiny. Is this brush feeling nice? I'm glad. It's spa day. What's that? A little to the left. Did I get it? <laughs> 
Be at peace, little hedgehog. There's a dog inside the well. He can't get out of there. Help. I'm trapped down here and I don't like it. It's weird and dirty. Luckily, people heard him. Hi, do you want to come out? And called in some rescuers. Don't worry, pup. Help's on the way. Come on, come on, hurry up. We need to get the dog out of the well. I'm really worried about this dog. But these rescuers are ready for action. I wonder how they're gonna get him out of there. Throw down a rope? Might be tough to lasso him. Lower a cage? But then again, how would they close the cage and make sure the dog doesn't fall out? Or even get the dog in the cage? Oh, it looks like they brought climbing gear. What? They're gonna go in the well? They're braver than me. I would not want to go into any deep, dark holes because you never know what's in there. All right, his gear is on. He's going over the side. Careful. I wonder what he's saying. Probably don't drop me down this well. Meanwhile, the puppy's saying, get me out of here. I really admire how brave these rescuers are to do whatever it takes to get the animal out. Only people with a true kind heart can actually be like, I'm going to do this. Not for like fame, not for greatness, for the animal. He made it! That dog is so happy to see him. Aw, they're hugging. We're looking at a real rescue hero. But this rescue isn't over yet. The dog's still in the well. And so is the rescuer. It looks like they're sending down a net. The dog's like, ooh, what's this for? Is it a toy? Now the rescuer's telling him to get in the net. He's like, are you sure this is a good idea? Going up. Careful, watch the sides. Those rocks are hard. <gasps> the net's stuck. Oh, they got it off. And the dog is out. You just wait here for a minute, doggy. We can't leave your friend down there. Going up is harder because you're going up against the force of gravity, which is a magical force that pulls you downward. <laughs> and he's out. They did it. He's free and so, so happy because they're taking him home. This pup had quite a day, but thanks to his brave rescuers, he made it home just in time for dinner. Remember, if you see a dog or any other animal in danger, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. That giant moth looks like she's in trouble. I wonder why she just doesn't fly away. That ground's probably steaming hot. She might need some water, or maybe she's looking for help. Luckily, Tala came along. Even though she was a little afraid of insects, she knew she couldn't leave the moth where it was. Anything could happen in her parking lot. Anything if you're out in the open. A car would have ran over her. A lizard could have come over and snatched her. A lizard would have been eaten by a snake, maybe, or a bird. Anything. It looked like the moth was trying to dry her wings. Maybe she just came out of her cocoon. I bet that's why she couldn't fly away. So Tala held out her hand and the moth climbed right on. Moths are very fragile. They're very fragile. You can only touch their body and their body only. If you touch their wing, their tiny microscopic scales that you could pull off and that could make her not fly and she needs to fly. Moths need to fly. So Tala decided to wait with the moth to protect her. But the moth just sat there all day long. Tala was getting more worried. And to make things even worse, a storm was coming. So she brought the moth inside and found a safe place for her to rest. Once the storm passed, she took the moth outside and she flew away. Tala was relieved. But her moth rescuing days weren't over yet. In fact, they were just getting started. 
was a moth had left behind. Moth eggs! Over 200 of them! And it didn't take long for them to hatch into baby caterpillars. If someone gave me 200 moth eggs, I'd be really excited. Imagine all the cuteness. Tyler watched over them while they grew. Bigger and bigger. Now they're ginormous. Tyler loved taking care of them, which mostly meant feeding them a lot. Soon the caterpillars started spinning cocoons. They're doing that because they are getting ready to become moths. They need to spin a cocoon so they stay from the outside world and then they hang upside down and then they start to form a shell and their skin starts to come off while the shell's moving downwards. After the shell's all over their body, they drop the skin and they start forming the like the organs and everything start switching places, start moving around the antennae, and then they start forming wings. And then after it hatches, it's just there, it's a moth. But when they finally emerged, Tala didn't think they looked much like their mum. Until their wings began to open. Finally, they were ready for their life in the wild. And Tala was so happy when she watched them fly away. Remember, if you see a moth or any other animal in danger, do not try and rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. There's a kitten in the storm sewer. It is not safe down there. If it rains too hard, the water could just pick him up and take him away. Plus, who knows what's in those pipes? Blah. But good news, kitty. I mean, Foxy. I mean, kitty. Just pretend this is a cat, all right? Lindsay the cat rescuer is here to save you. Go in my trap. Looks like she lowered a cat carrier on a rope. All the kitten has to do is just climb on it. Go on. Maybe he's like, looks scary up there. I'll just stay down here. Well, too bad, mister. Cats can't live in the sewer. That's just for mutant turtles, escaped crocodiles, and video game plumbers. Oh no, a little guy ran deeper into the pipe. He must be really scared. Now what's Lindsay gonna do? Call the fire department? I mean, who else would go down into the- <laughs> What? Lindsay, where are you going? You can't just go Koopa trooping in there. It's a long tunnel. She must know what she's doing, right? <laughs> Definitely do not try this at home. So it's getting more narrow as I continue to go in. You can see my shoulders are touching. I really hope Lindsay doesn't get stuck. I don't want this animal rescue to turn into a people rescue. I'm already crawling, but my forearms are killing me. It's getting painful. Hope she finds that kitten soon. Ew. Oh, there he is! I can see his little eyes. But there was another problem. I can see him. And I can see the end, so. Lindsay could see light at the end of the tunnel, which would, you know, Usually be a good thing, just not in this case. Because if the cat decided to run out the other side, she might never be able to find him again. Lindsay needs some backup. So she called another rescue, Andrea, who went to the other side of the tunnel to guard the exit. So if the cat tried to make a break for it, she'd be ready to catch him. So while Lindsay crawled, Andrea waited. And waited. Uh, by the way, has anybody else noticed how tiny the tunnel is on the other end? I can't believe Lindsay's in there. Finally, after 30 whole minutes. I'm gonna try to push him out. All right. You. All right, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Ah! Quick, Andrea, get the cat carrier. They got him. Oh! We got you, buddy. Can I get out of this tunnel now? Hello? Andrea, little help? Everyone was so relieved. But this rescue wasn't over yet. The kitten was safe for now, but he'd need to be safe forever. So Lindsay decided to become his foster mom. She also gave him a name, Donatello. But living inside was gonna take some getting used to. The entire role, huh? Who did that? So to help him feel at home, Lindsay 
got Donatello something familiar, but unlike the other tunnel, these ones were for play with a whole bunch of cat friends. Thanks to Lindsay and the other brave animal rescuers, Donatello is safe and happy. Remember, if you see a kitten or any other animal in trouble, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. Whoa! That's a lot of puppies! Puppy pile! This is Kaya, and she just became a mama to a bunch of puppies. But before Kaya was on mommy duty, she was a lonely dog in a shelter who needed a rescue. No one wanted to foster her until Jessie came along and changed this pity's life. Freedom walk. What do you think? Look at this beautiful place you got to be now. When Jessie first brought Kaya home, he noticed she was a little underweight. He'd have to keep an eye on her to make sure she was eating properly. But after only a few days, Kaya started to gain some weight in her belly area. Progress. But it was happening a little too fast. Jessie thought, maybe I'm overfeeding this pup. But when he brought Kaya in for a quick checkup, it turned out Kaya was eating for more than just herself. She was pregnant with a whole litter of puppies. At first, Jesse was in shock. He'd only signed up to foster one dog. Now he was gonna have an entire puppy litter too. But Jesse was ready to help Kaya be the best mom she could be. Ooh, puppy's kicking you this morning. Kaya was getting super tired from carrying all these puppies in her belly. Most days, all she wanted to do was snooze or roll around in the grass. But she still had the energy for a little fun now and then. Dog in labor wants to play with water. Soon, Kaya started to do her nesting, which meant it was almost time for her puppies to arrive. Then, early one morning, the pity puppy party began. Good girl. Good mama. Kaya was doing so well with her newborn pups, and Jessie thought, she's already given birth to six, so she should only have a few more left, right? But then, more puppies were born, and then even more. She was up to 15 pups. Oh my goodness, what a litter of puppies. Jessie was shocked. For sure, this had to be it, right? But then, almost three days after the first puppy was born, number 16! It was a puppy extravaganza! Mama Kaya was finally done having puppies, and you could just imagine how tired she was. Now it was time for Jessie to help this new mom out with her enormous new family, and she was grateful, because puppies can be quite a handful. They're escaping. But Kaya loved every single one of them so much. She would lead them around the yard in her very own puppy parade and taught them all the things dogs need to know, like how to dig and how to properly play. Come on, buddies. Outside. Pretty soon, it was time for Kaya's puppies to find their forever homes. It was so hard to say goodbye. But Kaya and Jessie knew these pups would be just fine. After all, they did come from the best mama. But not only did Kaya's pups find their forever home, Kaya did too. Jessie had only ever meant to foster Kaya for a little while, but after all they had been through together, he knew he could never give her up. You never know what might happen when you foster a dog, or 16. But one thing is always for sure, Lots of licks, tons of tail wags, and the chance to be a hero. Wandy's always been really happy. Because when he was little, a hero saved his life. She found Wandy in her backyard with big scratches on his back. She wanted to take Wandy home and make him part of her family. But the more time they spent together, the more she noticed Something wasn't right. Sometimes Wandy liked to do dog stuff, but other times he acted like something else. The lady decided to take Wandy to the vet, where they all got a big surprise. Wandy wasn't a dog, he was a dingo. Sorry, I'm a what? 
A dingo is a type of wild dog from Australia. They don't usually live with humans, and some people are actually afraid of them. The rescuer knew she couldn't raise a wild dingo in her house. So she called an animal sanctuary that's just for dingoes, who took in Wandi and introduced him to the pack. Wandi was pretty nervous to meet dingoes, even though he was one. He didn't know a thing about being a dingo. Weren't dingoes supposed to be fierce? Scary? Frightening? Wandi followed the others around and tried to copy what they were doing. Eventually, he figured out a few things, but the rescuers could tell he'd need some extra help. So they gave him a buddy, Hermione, the perfect dingo teacher. This is how you dig for food, Wandi. Now we wrestle. On a hot day, you just put your whole body in the water bin. Seriously, you gotta try it. Uh, Wandi, why are you eating grass? Don't look at me. No idea why he's doing that. With Hermione's help, Wandi started to get the hang of being a dingo. He sort of loved it. And he didn't have to be fierce at all. He played and explored and was part of the pack. Wandi still has a few things to learn, though, like not hogging the food. But he'll get all the time he needs to figure out who he is a wild, silly, speedy dingo with a family to call his own and the best home. Bet you've never met a dog rescuer before? No, I don't mean a dog rescuer. I mean a dog rescuer. A dog who rescues? That's me, Graham the dog rescuer. Yeah, I'm basically a hero. Okay, but no spoilers. Here we go. One day, I was just minding my own business when I saw something unusual. Bunnies in a hole in my backyard! I could tell they needed help. And this little guy, well, he needed the most help. So my mom brought him inside. And we named him Dash. Mom, stop hugging Dash. This is my rescue story. He fell asleep in my mom's hand. At least I think he was sleeping. It was hard to tell because his eyes weren't open yet. We wanted to bring him to the Wildlife Rescue Center, but they didn't have any space for him yet. So until they called, we had the perfect space for him. We made a bed out of my dog toy. And he fell asleep again. Is this all bunnies do? My mom needed my help big time. Whenever she'd go warm up his milk, which was a lot, She'd ask me to watch Dash. Are you gonna watch him? Watch him, okay? I'll protect you, tiny fuzzy little ball of cuteness. So while he slept and ate and slept and ate, I was never more than a dog's breath away. You warm enough? Up oh, too close, huh? Soon he was getting too big for his bed. And I said he can sleep next to me but I didn't want to scare the little guy. So I just watched over him. And he let me get closer and closer until it's happening. Dash started thinking of me as his big brother or his big blanket. Either way, I was happy. And then, on the seventh day, he opened his eyes. I was so excited for him to see me. Hey, Dash, it's me, Graham. Were you picturing me this furry? Everything was going so well. But then, we got the call. The Wildlife Center finally had room to take him. 
That night, I didn't sleep too well. I was thinking about how much I was gonna miss this fluffy little guy. The next morning, my mom let me say goodbye. Say bye. I was sad, but I knew he was going to the best place to learn how to be a wild bunny again. Every day since, I've been thinking about Dash. How he used to sleep on my mom, and sleep in my dog toy, and sleep on the bed. He really slept a lot, I guess. And then, one day, the rescue center sent us a picture. Dash was about to be released into the wild. I hope that someday, I'll see Dash again. I'm sure he knows there's one backyard where he's always welcome. Um, is there a frog in my salad? Look at this, there's a frog. So, my name is Simon, and I've just found a frog in my food. A frog I will call Tony, who I, thanks to my careful eye, single-handedly saved from becoming dinner. At first, I wasn't sure what to do or what to think. I was like, where did Tony come from? Are frogs supposed to be in salads? Did I order him by accident? Was there a mix-up at the salad frog factory? But then I took a deep breath and focused on what's important, getting this little green guy home. I wanted to release him back to the wild, but when I realized how cold it was outside, I figured it might be best for Tony to stay a while. And it was too late to take him to an animal rescue, so Tony was gonna have to chill with me for the time being. It is 2.40 a.m. And Tony's doing great. He's just hanging out on his lettuce. Once I realized Tony would be staying with me, I knew I had to act fast. Cause who knows how long Tony's been away from his froggy home. So I decided to turn this here salad box into Tony's own terrarium. Think of it as a mini jungle home with plants and soil that are similar to Tony's natural habitat. This wasn't a bad setup for Tony. He's got the leaves, the water, and some bugs I found for him. Why would any frog ever want to leave this place? Except leaving is exactly what Tony kept doing. Again, and again, and again. There's a little escape artist. He's going back in his little tank. Well, look who we found in the shower, the drama queen. It was scary having to go find him every time, but I knew Tony was pretty scared too. Being in a new, strange place couldn't be easy for such a little guy, which is why he kept trying to get out of it. All right, so we found Tony in the shower. He was covered in dust bunnies and very dehydrated. But we found him, we found him. Oh, there he is. Hi, baby. I realized maybe it was time for Tony's terrarium to get an upgrade. So I headed out to the pet store to find another temporary but more secure terrarium for Tony. Tony needed more space, and this would be much more roomier than that old salad box. Thankfully, I grabbed this new temporary home just in time, because while I was out, Tony got out again. He escaped on the counter yet again, so we're gonna put him in his new little place and hopefully he won't hop away. While Tony adjusted to his new terrarium, I was still trying to figure out what was best for him. Should I release him outside? Should I put him in another salad? I put my story online, and some animal experts told me that the best thing for Tony would be a loving home, like mine. And as soon as I heard that, I knew it was time to get Tony an even better terrarium where he can live his best frog life with me. All right, we just got Tony's new terrarium and it's so cute. I'm so excited. All right, so let me go. Let me go get Tony and put him in. And right away, Tony was living a froggy dream. And there he is. Oh, he's in his new house. Now that he's in a proper home, there haven't been any more escape attempts. For now. I never expected to be a frog dad. But it turns out a new friend can be found anywhere, even in a salad. Winnie the dog loves dashing through the snow. But she wasn't always such a big snow fan. In fact, she used to kind of hate it. And she had a good reason to. Because not long ago, 
before she had a home, Winnie was stuck outside during a snowstorm. She was so cold, her body had gone numb. She wished she could go someplace warm. Then something magical happened. Rescuers appeared. Hey, buddy. You cold? The rescuers needed to get Winnie out of the cold as quickly as possible, but she was too exhausted to trudge through the deep snow. So the rescuers made a stretcher using a big sheet of plastic and carried the frozen pup to safety. But just because she was out of the snow didn't mean this rescue was over. The rescuers took Winnie straight to the animal clinic so the vets could give her a thorough checkup. They needed to make sure the snow hadn't hurt her. Winnie liked the feeling of the vet's warm hands on her fur. She liked it even more when they gave her a bath and a haircut. Pretty girl. But she started to feel anxious. What if her rescuers just put her back outside, in the snow? But then, something really amazing happened. Her rescuers decided she could live with them. Her new home was the coziest place she'd ever been. She had doggy siblings and a favorite chair. Everything was perfect, until her parents tried to take her out to play. And this happened. When he was like, nope, 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 no thank you. Snow was bad. Snow was cold. When he never wanted to be cold again. Mom and dad knew there was only one thing to do. Go shopping. I'm looking for a winter jacket. A jacket? Oh, look at the blue one. Don't you like these? And when they got home, Winnie's mom was so excited that it made Winnie feel excited too. And when she finally wiggled into her jacket, she felt pretty special and fashionable. Okay, let's go outside and play. Let's go run in the snow, come on. Wait, did she just say snow? But this time, something was different. Winnie's jacket was keeping her body warm. So she decided to play, just not on the snow grass. But then, without realizing it, she ran right into a giant patch of snow and stopped, or should I say froze, in her tracks. She still remembered that cold, awful day. And for a moment, she thought about running back inside. But just when her fear was about to win, Winnie didn't let it. Because she was brave. And she was having the time of her life. She wasn't afraid of the snow anymore. Because now, she had a family who would always take care of her. And a home filled with warmth and love plus a really warm jacket. Like, that helps a lot. You'd be surprised. Sometimes picking up a pizza turns into a rescue mission. All Amy wanted was a slice for dinner. But when she saw Rita outside the pizza parlor, she knew her plans had changed. It looked like Rita didn't have a home and no one was around to take care of her. She'd lived her whole life in a pizza parlor parking lot. Amy knew this wasn't a safe place for a cat and that Rita needed to be rescued. Amy hoped that Rita would come right home with her, but Rita didn't seem to want to leave. She liked the outside. Day after day, Amy kept trying to rescue Rita, but no luck. Amy was determined to get this kitty into a safe, cozy home. But as she was making her usual stop to attempt to rescue Rita, things got a little more complicated when another fuzzy face appeared. Pepperoni. He was one of Rita's kittens. One cat was already hard enough and now Amy had two to rescue. Roni was super friendly too, but just like his mama, he wasn't looking for a new home either. Amy started to wonder, maybe these cats were fine on their own. Maybe she wasn't meant to rescue them. But then winter came. It was about to get very cold in town, too cold for these cats to be outside safely. 
there was no time to lose. These cats needed to be rescued. Amy got in contact with an animal rescue program who gave her her own drop box. A drop box is a box with a pulley system that Amy could use to safely rescue Rita and Roni, the pizza cats. This plan had to work. Time was running out. That night, Amy went to the pizza parlor and set up her drop box. And she watched and waited as Rita and Roni started getting closer and closer to it. She had to wait for the perfect opportunity. Okay. Rita's in the box. Now we just need Roni. Amy waited and waited. Then, all of a sudden... Okay, she's going, she's going. She's going. She's in, she's in. Tell me when she, tell me when she's all the way in. Okay. She did it! Amy was able to safely rescue Rita and Roni. Now it was time to take them back to her cozy, warm home. But when they got there, Rita and Roni weren't as friendly as before. They were scared. Amy was so surprised. Why would they be scared of her now? But Rita and Roni weren't scared of Amy. They were scared of this new place. They'd probably never been inside a house before. Amy wasn't sure what to do. She knew that being in her home was much better for them than being outside in the freezing cold. But it seemed like these cats only wanted to be outside. Then Amy had an idea. She was going to build them their own catio. An outdoor playpen connected to the house that Rita and Roni could go to freely. But the first time they saw it, they were a bit confused. They were like, what is this weird contraption this lady built for us? Am I supposed to go through here? But when Rita and Roni realized they could be outside and still be warm, the catio became their favorite place. And now they weren't scared. The pizza cats were living their best life. All those months ago, Amy had just been looking for a pizza. But what was just a takeout order turned into the ultimate rescue mission. And she ended up getting something so much better. Two adorable fuzzy babies. This is Kevin. He's on his way to see his best friend. Captain! They're such good friends, they can basically read each other's minds. Hey Cap, you thinking what I'm thinking? You bet I am. Golf cart adventure time! They're the kind of friends who never miss a chance to wear matching costumes. Or just sit on the porch thinking about stuff. Hey Cap, what if Earth is like one big tennis ball being thrown through space? Whoa, Kev, that's deep. Captain and Kevin wish they could spend every second together, but they can't. They live in different homes and have different families. But even when they aren't in the same place, they've figured out a way to be close. That's right, Kevin and Captain know how to video chat. Hey Kev, what's up? Oof, not much, just chillin'. Hey Kev, do I have something in my teeth? I don't think so. Do I have something in my teeth? Check out my new haircut. <laughs> Whoa, Cap, you're looking buff. Thanks, Kev. If you believe, you can achieve. Talking on the phone is fun, but nothing beats being together for real. Kev, I missed you so much! Me too! Especially when they get to have sleepovers. They like to kick things off with some backyard wrestling. <laughs> followed by quick water breaks. Then more wrestling, more water, Wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water, wrestle, water! Guys, 
Slow down. What's up next? A cruise around town. Say hi to the neighbors. Grab a treat. Excuse us, can we get two milk bone shakes to go, please? Ooh, uh, can you make mine with extra bones? Head home for a best friend dinner. Ooh, fancy. Gobble down some popcorn. And last but not least, tuck in for a nice bedtime story. There's only one thing about their sleepovers that isn't fun. When they have to say goodbye. Bye, Kevin. Kevin and Captain have a friendship that runs deep. It shows us life's better when you can share it with a best friend. And even if you can't always be right next to them, they're always in your heart. Or on the phone. That works too. Something was wrong with Munchkin the cat. He was feeling sick and having trouble breathing. He didn't have the energy to play with toys or wrestle with his brother. His mom, Chriselle, was worried. Munchkin needed to go to the vet. But the vet was an hour away. Because of the pandemic, the country was on strict lockdown. And driving that far was against the rules. But Chriselle knew that this time, she had to break the rules. She put Munchkin in the car and headed straight to the vet. When they were stopped at a checkpoint, Chriselle was worried. What if they were told to go home? Munchkin needed help now. But the people at the checkpoint saw that Munchkin needed help. And they were let through. As soon as they arrived, the vet put a mask on Munchkin that gave him oxygen and helped him breathe. After examining him, and cleaning him up, the vet realized he had pneumonia. So he gave Munchkin more oxygen. He needed to keep using it until his lungs healed. The vet gave Chriselle a machine to bring home so she could keep giving oxygen to Munchkin. He liked it best when she filled up a box with the steam. Chriselle always kept Munchkin next to her because she was so worried about him. Every day, she'd give him oxygen and then start work. And then one day, she saw this. He wanted to play. A little too hard. And pretty soon, Munchkin didn't need help breathing at all. Then something pretty amazing happened. Munchkin figured out a new way to talk to Chriselle. He had different meows to let her know what he was thinking. There was, I need to use the bathroom, or I'm hungry, or even open the door, please. Munchkin's new meows meant he and Chriselle could really understand each other. In his own way, Munchkin makes sure to say thank you to Chriselle for taking a big risk to save his life. But Chriselle knows that love is always worth taking a risk. When he got sick, Chriselle was scared for Munchkin. But now, he's back at home, feeling healthy and feeling the love. You'll never guess who's under all that dirty, knotted wool. A sheep named Victoria. Victoria was lost in a forest for five whole years. That's a long time for a sheep to go without getting shorn. Imagine not getting your hair cut for five years. It would be so long and tangled. You'd look like, well, Victoria. Luckily, somebody spotted Victoria and called for help. They would need a big team to rescue such a woolly sheep. 
she was covered in so much wool that she couldn't walk herself down the hill. They were gonna have to carry her out, which meant Victoria was getting the royal treatment. Her rescuers carried her all the way down the hill on the most elegant throne. Okay, okay, it was a stretcher. But Victoria felt like the queen of the world with all those people holding her up. It was a difficult journey down the hill, but the rescuers got Victoria safely into their van. It was time to free Victoria of all that heavy, dirty, knotted wool. But first, they needed to get her out of the van, and Victoria was suddenly really scared. What did all these people want from her? Where did her royal throne go? She was like, I'll stay here in this van, thank you very much. But with a bit of encouragement, Victoria's rescuers got her safely out of the van and into the barn. Now that she was back on solid ground, Victoria realized this place wasn't so bad, which made her very excited. She started running, even with all that heavy wool to carry. Now that Victoria was feeling happy, it was time to get snipping. A shearer came to give Victoria her much needed haircut. He worked slowly and gently, making sure not to hurt Victoria while he snipped away all that wool. She was like, ah, that's the stuff. The shearer sheared and sheared, and sheared some more. Wait a minute, hello, Victoria? Are you in there? Oh, there you are. Looking good, girly. She must be feeling better already. The rescuers put all the old wool on a scale to see how much it weighed. Can you guess? It was 55 pounds. That's about as much as a bulldog. Victoria felt a heavy weight lift off her shoulders. Like, not just as an expression either. She was so relieved and a little bit cold. So her rescuers gave her a warm jacket and a cuddly teddy to snuggle. After Victoria got comfy in her new home, it was time to meet the other sheep in the sanctuary. Before long, she fit right in with the herd. But of course, she loved to stand out on her own too. She felt so free. Nothing could weigh her down, not even her sweater. Before Victoria came to the sanctuary, she had a hard life living alone in the woods with no one to help her or even cut her wool. But now she had a home, a shaved coat, a cuddly teddy, and a bunch of new buddies. Thanks to her rescuers, Victoria was living life on the farm like the queen she was always meant to be. one of the brightest rescuers we've ever seen. I mean, did you see how dark it was in that tunnel? It's a good thing she had a... Hey! Help the kittens find the subscribe button.